This mm-hmm. is wealth. These are, now you're in wealth conversations in your mind. So what are the what are the conversations going on in your head on what you create from your mind and turn into wealth and mailbox money? One thing is always going to be for sale is real estate. I don't care. Everyone's got a price, man. Hey there. Welcome to Make It Rain, multifamily real estate investing for millennials. I'm Luke. And I'm Daisy. And with every episode, whether we're discussing a special topic or have an amazing guest, the goal is to provide education and resources for anyone interested in investing in multifamily real estate, especially if you're a millennial. Yes, we're excited to chat with you about the what, the whys, the hows, and the who's. Enjoy the show. Welcome back, everybody, to Make It Rain, multifamily real estate investing for millennials. This is Luke. And this is Daisy. And today we're excited to have Chris Ross on the show. Welcome to the show, Chris. I appreciate being here. And even the sidebar conversation right before we hit record on this, I'm looking forward to it. It definitely feels like the energy is going to be recycled well on this call. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, of course. It's good, good to have you on. And we were talking about all things barbecue in Austin and mm-hmm. South Carolina <laughs> and, and a lot of exciting stuff. So we're, we're excited to, to dig th- uh, deeper into your story and, and who you are. So before we jump into the content, we always like to start with something a little bit more personal. So do you mind sharing with our audience a nickname that your closest circle calls you? Chuck. Chuck. Um, my closest circle, when that, the reason why they've called me Chuck I'm from Charleston originally. And so when I went into the military, as a thing you do in the Navy. They give you nicknames mm-hmm. and they use it to call you by your last name. But I really didn't like that. But then the boat, well, the ship that I was actually attached to, I was squadron attached to, was actually um, currently, well, was based in Charleston before they closed down the naval base. So they moved to Mayport, Florida. And it's called the USS DeWert. And when I moved on to, when I got on board that ship, I was 19 years old, didn't know anything. And they just name just came up, started off with Chuck Town, and then it went down to Chuck. And still to this day, if someone says Chuck, I look up. Wow. (laughs) That's a really good question. No one's ever asked me that before. That's pretty good. Wow, that's awesome. Well, thank you for for sharing and getting a a little bit more personal on your story there. Uh, We'll jump now into into your journey. Tell us about a little bit about yourself, your background, and leading up to what it is that you do now and and, why you're out in, in the UK. Mm, that's a great question. Again, um, going, going back in time, I guess when I was in my adolescence part, um, I would, I, people say that, you know, I'm, I'm fluent in French, or I'm fluent in Italian, I'm fluent in English. Well, I'm fluent in energy mm-hmm. and it comes, goes all the way back to my older sister was now, she's now deceased. Um, she passed away when I was 15, about turned 16, but my mom, when she was born in 78, I was born in 81. I didn't know like I learned how to speak through energy and intuition rather speaking English because she put me in a crib. I, I would communicate that way. So, and that was and later in life, I discovered that was my gift that it was there for on purpose. Mm. Fast forward all the way up to about when she passed away. I was always good in sports. Um, I, I wouldn't say fairly popular kid. It's just that, you know, if you're good in sports, you're kind of popular, you know, and I, I lived a good life. I mean, my, I didn't come from money. But I came from like real strong values and core values and, and principles. Hmm. And I was raised the right way, you know, back in those days when, you know, girls walk up to a door and someone opens it. Well, I still have those morals, right? People here in England, they don't have a cut. They're like, what is this? Like, what are you doing? I'm like, walk in the door. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so then I went to the military. When she passed away, I was, I didn't know that that was spiraling into my journey. And I was secretly running away from pain because I just wanted to get away from Charleston. I've always kind of felt in my life, I've felt, I just felt my, I was different. Hmm. I didn't know what that meant, but I just felt different. I knew that I've always, even when I, w- I go back to in life, I would just envision myself wealthy. Didn't know what that meant and how that was going to happen back in those days. You know, either you play good ball or a wicked jump shot or you won the lottery, <laughs> right? So entrepreneurship wasn't cool back then. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I went to the military, of course, I was seeking military because, of course, I wanted to serve my country. That was number one. I, that's the proudest decision. That's the proudest thing I've ever accomplished in my life is serving my country. Um, and I got to a certain point. And then, of course, college money. I didn't come for money. Went to college because back in those days, when you the only way if you're going to be able to make it in life is through how much, what have you accomplished in as an education? 
So then I graduated after after um, college, went to sort of selling chemicals, was a chemical engineer. You mentioned Clemson. Um, then that market took a huge dive and that sparked me into education sales. And education sales was something that I, I feel like it was my introduction to my future life. Hmm. Cause you don't make commissions from education. So my, my purpose was, was getting people on the phone and recruiting them into a trade school. And I wasn't, I wasn't, and I never wrote a sales script. I didn't, I, I'm just, I was dyslexic, undiagnosed. I couldn't, if you spelled something to me right now, and I would have to write it down to figure out what it was. It was obviously a bigger word, right? So, um, but I knew that I knew that I could get someone on the phone and not persuade them to do something, but really immerse myself into them mm. and to feel what they felt in their situation. So I trained this a lot in sales. When you make a phone call, you should do it just by audio. So you can close your eyes and you start painting the picture of what their life looks like by you asking the right questions and discovering. If you do that the right way, you're now going to be in their world and feeling what they felt. But this is where I'm different. That I'm going to feel what they felt in my experience, in my intellect, in my mindset. And then I can see the, the pattern of behavior. And once I understand the pattern of behavior, I can now start giving you advice on what I would do in that situation. That's how you morally and ethically sell. And that sparked me. And I, I was number one recruited in a nation for about four or five different years. People ask me, how the hell are you doing with these numbers? And I'm like, I don't know. I just get on the phone. I don't know. I couldn't understand it. So they're like, how, how many sales books have you? Like, I've never read one. I, I wouldn't because I didn't believe in those tactics that people are trying to persuade somebody. So that's what I'm saying. Education sales is different than normal sale. Because you enroll them into, because they have to, when you roll someone into a program, they're investing a lot of student gov, student grants, fundings, FAFSAs into, they, they can't, you, you pass over, they're, they're going to still get that money from you. You know what I mean? Right. So that's a huge moral obligation that I had to adopt and be like, okay, I need to put them in the best situation possible. Mm -hmm. Then I started being exposed to high level thinkers and high earners. Then I realized I was making good money and I was like, well, I was actually mentioned California. I was in San Diego at the time and they brought me a couple opportunities right when Facebook bought Instagram and it boom, social media took off. Well, what, where trade schools get their leads from lead gen, all these guys went from the educational space and went to online marketing. So they went online marketing. I came, became a hot commodity. Like mm -hmm. I had a high income skill, but I learned, started to studying, you know, obviously even before then psychology and the biology behind the human brain on what triggers people to do certain things and the chemicals. So I, the reason why I studied so much about the human brain, because I thought I was crazy myself. Like, how am I able to do this? Hmm. Then I learned how to train it. And once I learned how to train it, I don't need to just do it for one. You're not just getting one person's results. You're getting all the results of people I'm touching and obviously inspiring. So then I went to online stuff and then eight years, fast forward eight years, I've sold companies for 20 to $30 million. I've, you know, started investing into myself, built, built a corporation, about 200 people, then sold that to the trade school corporations. I'm in a process now of building the world's first and only educational based podcast community. Um, the reason why I say it's not a network, because I don't believe the way that networks are conducting business. So mm -hmm. if you want to become good at what you do, well, you need to be plugged into the right sources for people to hear your message and story. And that makes it really difficult for podcasters that have a good message. Like you guys have a great show, but you selling through because people are tuning into you and they're listening to you. So it's not about us. It's about what they're hearing. So I make them, I make my listeners part of that journey and a part of the story and part of the show. Like, guys, I want you to write this down. This is important. And then I, then I ask and I open the door for feedback. Send me a text message at 843-396-2104. It's a texting community that goes in right into the tech. And there's real live people responding to you. That's not autoresponder. So then you ask me like, why do, why I do what I do? It's because my sister couldn't do it. Hmm. That's a huge competitive advantage for me. Hmm. Like, so what do you do for a living? I change lives. How I go about achieving that is different for every situation. I change lives. 
and how I go about changing lives is I'm showing a different way of doing business. And that's, and that's something where that's the greatest current you can ever have on someone is the effect you leave on them. Yeah. And, you know, and that's just, it's, I, I've started to look at life through, you know, through the impact rather than how much money I can make. And that spiraled me into a different world. Yeah. Well, what was that different world? Would you say that, that it spiraled you into? That's good. That's a good, great question. Um, more of the different world is that anything in life is possible. If you put the right intentions in, if it's pure, mm. then it, you're, you're going to eventually win. You might not see the instant gratification. It's delayed gratification. So when people say I made sacrifices, it's not a sacrifice. It's a future investment. Yeah. Mm. You're just, you're delaying gratification. Mm-hmm. Perfect example, just having a, um, um, a conversation with a good friend of mine out here in London. She was mentioning that she suffered in life sometimes where people say, well, you're rude when you meet someone. It's like, well, I'm not going to pour into others that can't withstand and it doesn't have the capacity to hold on to that frequency and hold on to my energy. It's like, so I'm very conscious. And when she said that, I picked up on it because that's something that I'm very conscious of. Mm-hmm. Like when I go on shows, you probably hear me in other interviews not really go nuts on the interview. It's because I, I know that they can't handle that capacity of that, that frequency and that energy level. But you guys are, you put in the work. So when I'm pouring into you, I can recycle that energy. Mm. So by the time I'm done with the call, I'm, I'm actually a more hype. And then I start, you know, obviously you start coming down. So that world yeah. that I was spiraled into was a, 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 more of a spiritual type of way of thinking and feeling your intuition. And that's, that's, that's a really good question, but it's a lot of people, they don't grasp that concept because they think of spiritual stuff as hocus pocus. Yeah. Of course, everyone, you know, the law of attraction, I believe to it, it it's some, you know, to an extent, yeah. but I'm not going to sit in my house and go, hum, you know, I just, it doesn't work for me. Yeah. I don't feel connected that way. I feel connected by me being guided to the things that I'm supposed to be doing in life. And how, and did people go, well, I haven't become a millionaire. It was hard for me. Entrepreneurship is, is strenuous, but it's not complex as people think. It's really not. They go, well, I need to know finance. I need to know sales. I need to know, then, okay. That's the problem. You say you need, that need word gets you in trouble. Hmm. It's you want, you don't need, you don't need to, no one needs to do anything other than sleep, yeah. eat. And get, you know what I mean? And obviously rehydrate. You don't need anything in life. You want. So where does that, and then I start uncovering and start unpacking. Why do you say the word need? Mm. So it's yes. very, it's, 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 it's my methodology. It's like I break people down and I do it in a way of breaking you down for you to see it. Mm. Not by me telling you. Like I, I, can, I can't make you see something that it's, it's, you have so much stuff on top of that's covered. Yeah. I can't make I mean, you, you see to, it. You have to mm-hmm. choose to to be something, to be someone, to, to choice, live life yeah. a certain way, right? It, it's a choice. And going back to what you said, Chris, about uh, you know choosing, right? It's it's mm-hmm. it's about a daily endeavor, right? You choose daily, and the next day after that, you choose certain things again. And it's interesting that you say that because uh, you know I used to have trouble getting up early in the morning, mm-hmm. and now what I'm saying when I when I'm literally waking up out of bed is I'm choosing to get up. It's just it's just a choice. Like getting up, it's just a choice, and that's the literally the the term that I that I tell myself right when when I need to wake up early. Um, but going back, I wanted to touch on you know you mentioned creating a community, and Luke and I talk about that a lot on the show, right? Creating more access and you know, seeing more people, right, more millennials, more young people like us, you know, investing or, you know, taking their life into their own hands. Walk us through why that community aspect for you is is important and how you incorporate mindset into creating that community that you want to to create and, and make in the world. What a great question. Community is important because you don't look at people or things or companies as a competition. I was asking, someone asked me a question the other day. Why am I so aggressive with things and speak with a lot of authority? I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking through you. 
And why I speak through you, I'm speaking to everybody you've ever known. So I'm going to leave you with such a feeling that you have no choice but to go tell your friends about me. Because there's nobody in life is your competition. If you want to see the color of your mirror, go stand in it. That's your competition. And it's not because like your life, my, my life right now, you mentioned choices. We live in a cause and effect world. There's no coincidence in life. There's none. There's no luck. I don't have a horseshoe. I don't have a horseshoe somewhere in my office. It makes me lucky, mm-hmm. right? It's my, your, my life right now is a complete reflection of my thoughts that I've obviously had before. From those thoughts, I can't, I can't do anything about my thoughts other than direct them into a positive outlet. So the, my advice to millennials or people wanting to get started or looking at life in a different way, you need to go and unpack all your experiences and all the things that you believe. And before it becomes a belief, it was someone's opinion. Hmm. So when that opinion, so what are these opinions? Where'd you pick up on this? So someone said, money doesn't grow on trees. Yeah, it does. You chop down a tree and get me some leaves. You can make money off of that. Everything in life is for sale. Hmm. Everything in life is for sale. Every, these watches, these, all my, my house, it's going to be for sale when I pass over. I can't take it with me where I'm going. Can't. So everything in life is for sales. It's for sale and it's for either you use debt, consumer debt, or investor debt. Consuming debt is bad debt. I like a perfect example. I became one of the best in the game when it comes to sales and I never paid myself a commission. Ask me why. Why? Why? <laughs> That's earned income. Hmm. I don't spend earned income. Hmm. Earned income builds my companies. Passive income is how I'm able to build. And it flourishes. And I, when I look at community, the more that's why the podcast community, what I'm doing has never been done. And the reason why it's never been done, because I've done it in three different industries this way. I'm just now focusing my attention on podcasting because I believe podcasting is one surefire way to have access, direct access to your buyers. If I subscribe to your show, when your show goes live, it's going to ping, ping my phone. And you're looking at your phone. So what? So to go, well, how are you able to have that way of looking at life? Because I'm talking about my life. Mm. You, anyone can put a microphone in their face. The people are tuning in as if someone's got something to say. Mm. So what do you have to say? What's your message? Are you all about you or are you all about your community? Mm. I do everything through my community. I only do it for my community. And through that, that's passive income. For me, that's the investment. That's my ROI. It's pouring into my community. And, and just the ladies and gentlemen, just the ones that are tuning into this, anyone can be part of the community. Anyone. I don't care if you're a podcaster, content creator, or you're a listener of a show. I'm combining all aspects. Mm. So the listeners could be fans. I'm giving them direct access to anything that involved within my company. And Winject Studios is not just, it's why it's called Studios. You have Winject Radio, Winject Music, Winject TV. And it's all what I'm doing is I'm inviting everybody to one party and giving them direct access to like, you know, some major influencers. It's not just me. Like I have some major like uh, resources that are available for exclusive offers that you can't get anywhere. Mm. You can only get it within my community because they're making that investment in me because they see the potential ROI and they believe in the message. So that's Mm why I'm building what I'm building is I feel like my, I feel like I'm being drawn to it. But if I'm, you mentioned waking up in a day, like waking up in the morning, you make that choice. Would you didn't make that choice to wake up at that time? You made a choice at night. You put in your mind, you don't realize how powerful your brain is. You made your choice. You made that choice at some point in the future. I mean, in your past, obviously today, somewhere in that day, you said, tomorrow, I'm going to wake up at 4 a.m. And the reason why I want to wake up at 4 a.m. is it could be a multitude of reasons. But you're doing it because of you. So you made that decision. So by the time you wake up in the morning, you don't realize that you're already starting to be awake. 
You're not as groggy. And the first day is going to be a little difficult. And then that second day is going to come a little bit easier. The mm-hmm. third day is a little easier. Fourth day. And then the next thing you know, you turn that opinion to a belief, to a habit. Now you turn that into a personality trait if you do it more than six months. Mm-hmm. That's now a person. That's a way of life. Yeah. So the success is all about seeing that 1%, 2%, seeing growth. You choose growth mm-hmm. over consistent, cons- consistency and you choose happiness over everything. Mm-hmm. If you do those two things, you'll always win. You'll always win. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but eventually you are not going to conform and everything's going to be in an alignment for you. Hmm. Can you end up speaking a bit about because I'm thinking of somebody who's 25 to 35, a sure. lot of our listeners, like all of you who are listening right now, if they have people in their lives where they feel like they're not as supportive as they could be, and they're trying I, to go a certain direction, you know, like how do, I, how do they handle it? How they handle it is they have a, they have a couple conversations and the conversations don't need to be a difficult conversation. It's through action. Mm. You just do the right things and start your day with the right intentions. And you only pour into people that are going to give you that return. So if you have people around you, those are going to be your biggest haters. You can have someone sleeping right next to you at night, your spouse, secretly wanting you to fail. So let's let that sink in just for a second. If you have a spouse or someone that's closest to you, it's always the one that's closest to you, secretly potentially want you to fail because they're attached to a version of you. Mm -hmm. This is the thing I love about the, the when someone asked me, it was a definition of true love. Definition of true love for me is just l- recognizing the other energy field and having nothing but aspiration for and loving it for what it is. Yeah. Not wanting to take anything away from it or control it. The next question is like, well, how can I always just, you just want to be around that energy. Like there's some people in life that I've went through life with and I had to suffer the con- con- consequences from. Because they were sucking the energy out of me. But m- me being more conscious of this now. So f- biggest advice I could ever give someone is 20, 25, 30 years old. Look at your life and look at your surroundings and look at the people in, in your life. And do you, are you, can you imagine them being around you when you get on the top of that mountain? Hmm. If you can't imagine it, it's not, it's not the way it's going to be. Whew, that gave me the chills. That's, that's definitely powerful. And I, you know, I send so much self-awareness from, from you, Chris, I want to go back and unpack a little bit more what you mentioned about um, how do you unpack your beliefs, right? For somebody who's, mm, you know, looking to tough. get to the next level, right? And, and you can see it, you can visualize where you want to be, you know, you can visualize who you want, you know, to be there when, when you get there. Um, but you said the first step is to unpack your own beliefs. How do you start that process? It's a difficult question to answer in a whole because unpacking your beliefs, you first need to have thoughts in the first place. So taking a deep dive into yourself, the Greek have a saying, it's called know thyself. Well, that's the whole misconception about that statement. It's because no one really truly knows themselves Mm. because you evolve every day. You get better or get worse. So you need to look at your life right now and start asking your question, like writing out principles. I wrote out some principles for myself, not beliefs, not what is, what do I believe with a strong conviction, strong conviction. And then I start unpacking that like a tree. So Mm -hmm. I believe family is everything. You gotta be careful with that. Family sometimes isn't everything. Family isn't by blood either. So you got to add, these are tough beliefs, right? Because these are ingrained onto us. They're put, projected onto us and they're showing us the way to live life. See, my, when I look at my parents, okay, and this is hard. I had to take a hard look at my parents' life. They did the best they could for me. My mom's adopted twice, eight back surgeries, beat cancer, lost her oldest child, born handicapped. The pain of that. My father, coming from an abusive um, childhood, was the youngest son of a alcoholic and used to abuse and beat the shit out of him. 
excuse me for cursing. I don't know if I can curse on the show, but no, it's people that have virgin <laughs> ears. So, and, and looking at his life and then him not being able, when his dad passed over, had so much love for his father that his mother couldn't stand him. And he didn't speak to his, my grand, I didn't, I don't even know that side of my family. Hmm. But I start, so this is a lot of pain. So when you go into your life and going and seeing and investigating why you're feeling pain, that's where all your treasure is. Hmm. That's where you start kind of unpacking it and really un, un understanding and pulling the thread of those beliefs. Hmm. Then start going, okay, now I understand where these beliefs come from. And there's the opinions now. So now what do I want to create? What, a, what life do I want to live? Then start going and reverse engineering it. I don't, I might not know who I am today, but I know who I'm not. And I come into meetings and I show up to discover who I've become. Mm. Not who I am. Like it's not about my, and I love the fact that you didn't come in and hit me with a huge bio or to plug my ears because mm. I don't want to know that I have arrived yet. I still have so much more to pour into. I have so much more to do. God willing, I'll get tomorrow. I'm just, I'm just not going to be that individual that's going to wake up one day and just live with regret. I, it, cause you're, at some point you're going to live some of it. But if you take on this whole concept overall of looking at your life and debunking what isn't going to serve you long, short term and long term. I got to get it away from me. So you got 25 year olds, 30 years old. Like, doesn't matter if you're 60 years old and you got people around you that aren't serving you, get them out. I love people from a distance hmm. and it's better to love them from a distance because I can see them coming. There are some people that I only text message with. Why? Because I got on a phone. I'm going to suck the energy right out of me. Yeah. And, and, and I love them from a distance. And I love and I tell them that. They have people that just, you know, they're a little bit more of a narcissistic type of tendencies, and it's all about I for them. Like, well, they'll one-up you. You'll be in a conversation, they'll one-up you. Mm -hmm. See these people? Yeah. It's a good indication that yeah. they're not supposed to be in your life, but they're supposed, they're supposed to be in your life at that moment to serve, to teach you a lesson. Mm -hmm. Look at it as a blessing. Mm -hmm. When people do me wrong, I say, thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you for showing me who you are. It took a while on this one, <laughs> right? It took a while, but then you need to not, not judge them for it and love them. Like, listen, I know you are saying all the right things and you're doing all the, and you're trying to do all the right things from where your intellect and your understanding and your energy. But if I could advise you of anything, this is what to look out for. <clears throat> I'm still going to be around you later on in life. If you can get up to that, because I'm never going to shut a door on someone's face. Successful people don't talk bad about people. Mm -hmm. They're not going to. They don't have, they don't want to take their, in, they're now going to start recreating your own trauma and recreating the same situation or the same person. Hmm. And that comes from beliefs. Does it not? So yeah. if you're, yeah. if you're yeah. conscious of your beliefs before they turn into a conviction, then you're one step ahead of the game because a conviction can turn into a behavioral trait and that's a bad thing. People say, well, <clears throat> I don't run because I have bad knees. We all have bad knees. All of us have bad knees. You just don't want it enough. I want to lose weight. Do you really want to or society telling you to lose weight? Mm -hmm. Like you losing weight. Are you still happy? Or are you going to be happy? So happiness over everything. Growth over consistency. Choose growth. And you're choosing growth. And if doing what makes you happy and joy in life, at some point, I don't know when it was for us in life, we've, and this is another kind of like sidebar comment of that question with beliefs. At some point, we stop believing in ourselves. Like, what did you want to do, Daisy, when you were a kid? What did, what did you want to be in life? What did I want to be in life? A teacher. Teacher? Okay, great. Yeah. What did you want to be, Luke? Astronaut. I, so do I. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> my screen over here, I have a Neil Armstrong quote of a big, huge, like, I remember the, um, oh, this is so funny. Remember the, um, my mom used to watch these soap operas, like Days of the World or whatever, and the moon, the, the, <laughs> the, the, um, earth would hit and it would turn and I would stop. 
<laughs> like I was, <laughs> before I can even speak, but anyways, I've always been I always <laughs> wanted to be an astronaut. But at some point, I believed I sold, bought into what they were selling me, and I stopped trying mm-hmm. to be an astronaut. Mm-hmm. So wherever you are in life, you're doing things now being reactive and you only can operate at a certain level. I'm doing what I am supposed to be doing right now. It took a while. I am now operating at an optimal level, 100%. Mm. Past life, I was only operating at 40%, 20%. Yeah. Because I was doing what the universe and society and other things were telling me I needed to do. It's where you see a lot of higher education. I was screaming this 10 years ago. You guys need to wake up. This internet world is going to tear education down. You're making it accessible. Mm. Yeah. Anything, anything in life. You, we've got podcasting right now. Yeah. If yeah. you want to learn, to, I mean, you, we're living in a society right now. That anything in life is accessible and, and available for you. Mm. Available. But you need to be tuned in to the right station. Mm. I don't listen to music first. I love music. I do not listen to music my first part of my day because my mind's the most impressionable at first part of my day. Yeah. I'm not going to listen to Cardi B talking about bees and hoes and, and Rick Ross. And um, I'm not going to listen to all this stuff. This is stuff when I can celebrate. Yeah. That's yeah. end of my day, picking myself back up, changing my way of thinking. My first part of my day, I need to create. And that's where my mind needs to be focused on is being alone in my own thoughts and understanding why do I feel this way? Yeah. So to that end, then, Chris, I know we talked about you. We talked about like going in a certain direction, right? And sure. kind of being able to handle those people who are dragging you down. How do you end up getting to the people that are going to help lift you up that you end up needing in your life to get to where you want to go? You attract what you you attract what you are. Right now, you're attracting what the what energy you're actually polarizing out. Mm. <clears throat> like the universe doesn't wait. And the universe doesn't have a time on it. That's a big illusion as well. People go, you're just impatient. There's lessons in life you need to learn to get yourself there. You, what you do is you'll end up start attracting the qualities of people in life. So when I think about, like, you know, of course, I went through a couple heartbreaks in relationships. I was um, Dr. Brene Brown. She's in Texas. She has a great, um, I've read a couple of her different books and it talks about grief. Like she talks about this on a Netflix thing. And it was really, I've always known who, who she was, but I was going through a real dark time in my life. Something happened where I turned on Netflix and I was looking to escape the world for a little bit. And I ended up watching something that I normally would watch at the beginning of the day to the end of the day. And she spoke right to me. Mm. I wasn't showing up. The reason why I wasn't showing up and showing my true self, and it wasn't like I was putting on a mask. I wasn't showing up because I didn't know they would be able to take what I'm going to give them. Because I was holding on to my old version of myself. I made a decision at that time. I needed to shed and destroy the version of myself today to become who I should be. If you do it that way, you're not focusing on all the things, external things. You're mm-hmm. only focusing on your internal dialogue. If you focus on your internal dialogue, you will attract the people in life and they will come to you when you're ready for it. Yeah. Like there's certain people that I have in my life. I'm blown away having an opportunity to work with these people. You're talking about hundred million dollar earners. They're asking me to do work with. I'm not asking them. They're coming to me, but they're coming to me because I'm, I'm now they see me as a beacon light on being able to bring them value on a larger scale. No go. Well, damn, I can't tell this guy no. Remember playing ball? I, <laughs> you got to be so good they can't take you off that field. Yeah, yeah. And I think that a lot of that comes back to knowing your value, right? Because we yes. talk about that on the show all the time to our listeners, right? You are maybe sitting at home, you know, driving, you're, you know, at work, you're listening to this, and you have something to offer. And you need to know and understand and believe in your heart what that is, right? Even if you have no experience in multifamily, you have no experience in, you know, digital marketing, you have no experience in 
X, Y, and Z, right? You can make a long list of the things that you don't have experience in, but you can also make a list of the things that you are an expert in because only you have lived your own life. Only you have learned the lessons that you've learned. Only you have, you know, met the people in your life that have impacted you, right? And so when you see life, I think, and, and business and, you know, everything from this perspective of abundance and what do I have to offer and really knowing your value, I think it changes the conversation when you approach yes. people and, yeah. you know, when you're talking about how to work together, right? It's this is what I bring, uh, you know, and somebody in the space helped me with that as well. But, you know, I was saying when, when Luke and I were first starting, he said, you know, we don't have the experience that you have. Right. And she said, you're a millennial, you know, social media, you know, you're very active on social media. Like that's your thing. Help me with social media. I'll help you, you know, with, with the, you know, ins and outs of, of multifamily. And so I think it's just so important to have that self-awareness and, and know who you are and what value you bring. I love that. Wow, that's so powerful. Most in, g- congratulations on you being able to have a look at look at life in that way. Mm-hmm. Because it, I wish I would have looked at life that it, at a younger age. But then again, I, I look at back at it and I just accept it, and I want to look at it as a blessing that I waited that long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because when you make that choice and you start making these decisions, and I'm like, okay, well. I need to look at someone's experience. I don't really look at experience when mm-hmm. I'm looking for help and guidance from someone. I'm looking to see how quickly can I make an impact of moving that needle. So me becoming, me being, being an entrepreneur, and I, and I speak a lot of this, and especially when it comes to investing, I am not going to make a decision unless I need to, and I know it's going to get me to the outcome. I would much rather wait and measure and reassess to ensure that I look at all the variables and all the components and that it doesn't matter what business it is and making investments. What am I not seeing right now? Mm. So when I look at moving parts, um, Robert Greene wrote a book called The 48 Laws of Power, a popular book. And he's that guy write, writes down, I'm, I don't care if it's on a napkin, I'm going to read it. That dude is a beautiful mind. <clears throat> I have all the 48 Laws of Power. I can go through and recite all of them, but I'm not going to waste your listeners' time. But rule number 39 is you, you create chaos in the waters and cause a lot of motion and a lot of things. You can catch the bright fish and the bigger fish. Mm. So when you look at industries and you're looking at things that you don't really have experience in, you make a lot of noise and bringing in that energy, you're going to shake some things up. So when people come and I go and make a deal and I'm, I'm making an investment deal and I walk in like, listen, here's what I want. Here's what I'm looking for. I need you to allow me and provide me an opportunity to get me there. If you can't, don't waste my time. Mm. I state my intention right at the beginning. Right at the beginning. And I do it with people that have a lot of value. And I do it with people at a store. I'm looking for carrots. Who can help me? Hmm. <laughs> who can help me? I don't know. The carrot aisle. Okay, great. Bugs Bunny. I'm going to go over there and look. I can't find it. I, I've, I've learned that through even just me being in sales. In the very beginning, when I started dialing with you, back in the those days, we still had to hit the buttons. Mm-hmm. I would dial with my left hand and I had a headset. I was going nuts. I would always ask them, are you a person of, are you the person can make a decision a day? And if you're not, who can, who do you know can help me? I am looking for people to go to this college or this program and this. So what do you do for a living? Well, this, are you happy? What kind of car do you have? Nissan Maxima. Great. What kind of car do you want? I don't know. What do you mean? You don't know. Don't know what you don't know how to get it. Or you don't know what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. I need to know these issues. Who are you? I told you I'm Chris Ross. I'm calling because of X, Y, (laughs) Z and I get them. I apply pressure. And I do that in everything I do in life. I apply pressure because if you apply pressure and that comes from my internal dialogue, I know who I, I know who I'm not. And I'm just going to live life to be able to prove to myself that anything in life is possible. And I, and then, you know, one quite great question. I'll always like to ask people is like, what is your competitive advantage? What do you draw from every day? Mine is something that brings tears to my eyes is I cannot look my sister in the face 
when I pass over, God willing, and her be disappointed in the life I created. Like, I don't have to do what I do for a living. I get to do it because she couldn't. So you mentioned beliefs and reaching out to the right people and experience in life. Well, I ask people, what is your competitive advantage? I think the biggest, biggest the difference between someone that's living a, a fulfilled life, at some point they end up conforming or stopping doing what they do because they're not hungry anymore. I'm hungry. I'm so hungry because I know that I can make an impact in people's lives. And whenever I lose that spark, that's that day I hang it up. Yeah. I got to move. I'll go just to go do something else. Like, who knows what I'm going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow, but I know what I'm doing today. And I'm just going to, I'm going to attacking my day. Mm. Like, yeah. I, like you guys don't even know. Like I'm walking in like, listen, I might not be the most, I guess you say most experienced. I might not be able to can speak 50 different languages. I might not be able to um, have the right solution to a problem, but I'm the most prepared for any situation because that comes from work. Cause then I asked then if something else hits me in the face, I'm like, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> you know? Like, so that's entrepreneurship. Like yeah. I didn't see that happening. Yeah. Where was I? What yeah. was I doing? Yeah. And that goes back to measuring and reassessing it. That's how I start and end my day is in my office. Like I work in, I don't bring my phone in my room. I work on me. By the time I walk into my office, then I'm not able to get my phone and I'm able to look at everybody outside sources of whatever their needs and want and desires are. People always want something from me. Mm. I don't care if you're a spouse or it's a person of whatever they're going to need to want something. Well, I need to need and want something for me first. Yeah. Just give, give it to you. And then I end my day. I always end my day with putting my phone in my office and I walk out of here. Yeah. <clears throat> there's a, I mean, of course, there's other ways for people to contact me if they need to get in contact with me. But when I walk into my room, that's a sanctuary. Mm. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, a lot of times on our show, we do focus a lot on getting started. How do you end up doing real estate? What do you end up doing? But a lot of it, it ends up before all of that, right? It starts with beliefs and decisions and these mm -hmm. choices that you're yeah. going to make around your mindset. Um, and I think it's important for all the listeners out there as you're listening, Chris has given you some, some big picture things to focus on, but then also like these tactical daily habits that you can end up incorporating, like mm -hmm. controlling your day, literally from the jump, you're not going to your phone and looking at whatever's going on on Instagram or, or the new song that's out. It's like, you're, you're in control of what's going on because your phone is, is not there, but that starts, like you said, it starts the day before mm -hmm. you're deciding, mm -hmm. okay, I'm not going to end up starting my day that way. I'm going to start it this way. Right. Um, what are some of those other, um, I guess, ways to end up moving that needle forward that are these actionable steps. If something for whatever reason, I'm thinking, well, Maybe this is a limiting belief that that I have, or I feel like our listeners may have that starting out so big with like past trauma and trying to address oh, all wow. those things that they've come up with. Like maybe they don't want to start there. Maybe it's like, well, maybe if I just do X, Y, and Z, that'll kind of lead, like start bottom up rather than top down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a really good question. Trauma. You mentioned that that's big for people. Trauma, like, okay, let me put it this way. What's a movie you cried at? Have you seen you cried? Uh, Saving Private Ryan. That's a really good movie. Actually, I might have shed a tear on that one too. Who knows? So I, if we watch that movie over 100 times, are you going to cry the 100th time? I would guess not, no. Because at some point, your brain has already seen that story. You already know the outcome. So it's not going to hit and strike a nerve with you in your emotions. Well, people are crying over their trauma for the rest of their lives. So you got to find what is that spark? What is that? What is that emotional button? So when I hit a button on someone, I'm looking to see a reaction. And starting your day, it does start with you, but then that's what you're, that's what you're focusing on. Why am I here? Why do I have another day? Mm. Why, why am I allowed another day? I can see, I can talk, I can move. I can, these are the things my sister couldn't do. So I had a different way of looking at life at the beginning of life. But we're humans. We're going to take, 
we're going to take everything for granted at some point because the more that we're exposed to it, even to, even with success, the more money I make, the more that I'd want to give away to charity and helping people and the things that I want to create in life and creating opportunities. But there was a time in my life that I was living paycheck to paycheck and 78% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck right now, even more so now. So I mentioned I've never paid myself a commission. Why I never paid myself a commission? Because I earned, that's earned income. So what do I need to do? What can I create to, you know, obviously to earn, start earning different types of income and passive and royalties. This is wealth. These are now you're in wealth conversations in your mind. So what are the, what are the conversations going on in your head on what you create from your mind and turn into wealth and mailbox money? One thing is always going to be for sale is real estate. I don't care. Everyone's got a price, man. You seen these movies? No, I like that house. The guy walks up, has a little bit of wealth. Like how much is for this house? You know, he's like, how much for this house? There's a checkbook out. This house isn't for sale. They'll clip onto the monologue and they're sitting in that house. Mm -hmm. Everybody is for sale. Everything in this life is for sale. Not people. Everything is for sale. Um, Steve Harvey talked about this. Um, he mentioned a story. It's real, I'm going to go into all the way into this, but he's an amazing story. He's a really good person to be able to share a vision with and share stories. A good storyteller. Usually comedians are. He talks about where he was living, not paycheck to paycheck, but he was living in his car. And he was homeless and driving and making money. And he started making a little bit of money and having a couple of these deals when he realized that the only way for him to create some type of wealth is to buy land. So he started buying, he went to the thing and he saw about six, six acres of the million of all the people in the world. It was divided up in all the acres of land. It was like six acres. So you wanted to own six acres of land. So he started looking at the, the place where they goes, well, this one's for like one point, like 200 something thousand dollars. And he's like, I can't afford that. I ain't got that because I have another person to come to this other country boy's house. He goes, I'll tell you what, I'm kind of in a bind right now. And he has like a Southern accent, kind of in a bind right now. How much money you got? He told him the amount. He goes, I'll tell you what, I'll give you the 60 acres for that. He was like, what? So sometimes in life, you're searching and seeking things. Yeah. You don't realize it didn't work out for you at that time. It's a bigger play later right. on down the road. Mm -hmm. He could have easily been discouraged and be like, man, and then start pointing fingers on why mm -hmm. the guy didn't sell it to him. I was yeah. color my skin. Uh, so he, didn't, he didn't like my accent. He didn't like the car that I was driving. See, I don't look at people on who they are today. I look on who you should become through your energy field. Mm. And if you can, if you do it the right way, you can, people will show you who they are. They will show okay. you and you don't need to, you don't need to see it with your eyes, but you will feel something's off. Like something's not right about this cat. Mm. Yes. I don't yes. feel this. And what you're doing is you're picking up on the energy field that's not recyclable. It's an illusion. Mm. I meet these cats all the time. And young, when I say cats, like as in a guy or girl, I meet these people that show up to me. I'm like, Chris, I can provide you value. I'm going to blow you up. I don't need to be blown up. I'm trying not to be seen right now. <laughs> I blow myself up. <laughs> right. I'm like, who are you? I'm like, oh, I get this a lot on Instagram. Okay. This is a perfect one. My other Instagram got hacked. I have over 200 something thousand followers and I had a verified account. Right. So then my Instagram got hacked and I started a new account. And I just grown up to like around 30 something thousand just by me, you know, talk. I mean, I, I'm not saying I'm connected. It's just that I do a lot of shows and I do a lot of things for people, a lot of <laughs> industries yeah. and people are coming. So I'm starting to get messages from these ass clowns, excuse my language that want me to be verified. Would you like to pay for a verification? I'm like, I verify myself today. Do you? <laughs> I don't need no blue tick to be verified and give me some type of validation in life. Like I care about what other people think of me. I don't care about that. Yeah. I, I mean, care I about you, me. I think you, you hit it on the nail, right? It's, it's knowing who you are when mm -hmm. you are self-assured, when you know the value that you're putting out in the world, when you know the energy that you're putting out in the world, 
you know, you, you can only get that kind of energy back, right? And it, you're not allowing other people, whether it's family, whether it's friends, anybody else, you're not allowing other people to, to impact you, right? And to, to bring you down and just being in control of your life, right? On so many levels, Chris. And I really appreciate, you know, you diving into the, the different aspects that we talked about today, right? The mindset, the, you know, trauma, right? Really understanding what your why is, because, life is going to get challenging. That's, that's guaranteed. Right. And when you have a why that's big enough, then you will get through it regardless of, of what happens. Right. And, and what comes up. Um, so with our show, we always, you know, love to, to provide a, a platform as well for, for, you know, our, our guests to be able to connect with our audience for anybody who's listening, you know, something resonated, look up Chris, reach out to him, connect with him on Instagram, connect with him on, you know, those different social media platforms that he has, where can people reach you? you to, to continue the conversation and get more of this energy? Sure. Um, great question. I appreciate the opportunity to share this with your audience. Um, it's 843-396-2104. And I'll say it again, 843-396-2104. That's my texting community. Um, that's if you are in the U.S. and Canada. If you're not in the U.S. or Canada, and it hasn't made, it's like they're doing a beta test, uh, these communities, this texting app, um, if you go to winject.com, W-I-N-J-E-C-T.com, that's the Winject Studios community. Um, really easy to find once you see that. So um, and those are the two, please remember I'm sending you those two places because that's going to be, if you go in there and visit that, you're going to start, obviously my community does help with a lot of outreach mm-hmm. and at least get you, they'll, they'll go to the right people to get to me. If you go on Instagram or you go on some of these other things, you're now talking to you know, like social media people. And it's just, you know what I mean? There's a, t- a team of mine, mm-hmm. but that's mm-hmm. direct access to me. You'll, mm-hmm. it's like the, I guess you would say the best way of contacting me and I'll get the message quickly. Gotcha. There you go. Well, um, listeners, Chris has given you direct access. He literally just said it. So, yeah. you know, follow directions basically like he's giving, he's telling you what to do. So go ahead and take advantage of that. Um, and you know, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your energy. Appreciate the recycling of the energy that that's happened here, of course, sure. too. So um, with that, it wraps up another episode of Make It Rain, multifamily real estate investing for millennials. And with that, make it rain, make it rain, make it rain. I love it. It's like shooting. We should have brought, should have brought like a, the, what is it? The, the gun, the, the money gun. <laughs> yeah, the money gun. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank love you that. so much. Thanks for listening. The best way to show support is to share it with anyone who might benefit from it and leave us an awesome review. Follow us on Instagram at Make It Rain Podcast and check us out on our website at MakeItRainPodcast.com for more goodies. Take action on your financial future today. See you on the next episode. See you soon.